Shopify supports image scaling by default. So you can kind of do the, these really neat tricks with uh, liquid in the code. Uh, I see a lot of people try to upload a separate image for everything in every spot, and they try to have you know one image that's 200 pixels, one that's 1,000, one that's you know 14. You know, and and part of it is interesting because while you know most people think yeah it's oversized, I should scale this down. Shopify gives you a way to do that where you only need one image all the time for any place that image will appear on the site, and it'll always be able to appear. You know, if you code it the right way, uh, based on you know the correct device width. Um, so it, that's another really really cool trick that I see a lot of people who aren't tech savvy will uh, try to upload a lot of images in different places, and it's just not really necessary all the time. Right. I mean, most of like you've essentially really honed in here on images, and I guess it's really coming from the place that if you want to improve your website speed, you just need to make it less heavy and if you're going to make it less heavy then pick the things that are have the most weight and in this case i guess there tend to be most nine times out of ten images yeah and you know honestly i feel like that is for e-commerce one of those really little uh subtle nuances that you get with mm. e-commerce that you might not have with any other website um you know a lot of business websites may only have three to four images on each page uh, an e-commerce website you want to advertise probably 20 products on you know your home page uh, e-commerce websites just have very complex needs and even if a website is really fast it, you know you get a new theme it's testing in two seconds you go and you add all of your images and suddenly it's gone up to 15 and you don't understand why uh, and that that is definitely a lot of why we place in a focus on images. <laughs> right. So, so does that mean videos are a complete no-no or are there things that you can do with videos too? Yeah, there, there's plenty of ways to, you know, even if it's an embedded video, a YouTube video, something that's hosted externally, uh, there's always a way to lazy load those. So let's jump into lazy loading. Um, I mean, I guess the temp, I, one of the pet peeves I usually have with some of these um, sort of, you know, whenever you're reading sort of advice, it's so hard to explain things at a technical level to a point where people can make intelligent decisions around it, right? So, you know, it, it's so easy to say lazy loading is awesome. And then, you know, you have people going and trying to do lazy loading on everything. When I guess here it makes sense that you try to lazy load as much as you can, but would you say you shouldn't lazy load anything above the fold or even above the fold? Absolutely. Yeah, I think above the fold content for me, I really like to, this is another thing you can do with Shopify, uh, serving images in different formats. Um, mm -hmm. Above the fold images, I think, don't need to be lazy loaded, uh, even exactly. though they might get flagged on a tool. Uh, the user's perception of speed is just as important as that speed metric on you know, web page test or whatever. Yeah. So you really want to give the user that, that idea that this website loads instantly. The second that I, that I type this web address in, the image content's there, everything is you know, in place. Um, Above the fold images, uh, I like to do progressive JPEG for, and it's mm. just because it kind of enhances the way the image downloads. Uh, I think it's it's definitely a little bit faster. So that for me is uh, definitely the different technique that I would apply to anything that's above the fold. And, and tell us a little bit about progressive images uh, for those of us who don't know, know about it. I, I mean, it's, it's super easy to do and it's something you could probably ask your designer to do. It's literally a checkbox on Photoshop, right? Uh, when you're exporting the, the image. But uh, tell us what it means um, so that you know, people have a good idea what it is. Yeah, so essentially, you know, when, when a regular JPEG is going to download on the website, uh, it's just going to try to download the entire image. Once the entire image file is ready, then it's going to toss that image onto the page. Um, with progressive JPEG, it's going to download a smaller piece at a time, and then it's going to more slowly make that image appear. Um, so a lot of sites I see have this little trick where it'll use a a color for the background. Um, it, it seems similar with progressive JPEG because you might only see a single color f pop up first and then you'll see the image slowly load in. Um, so right. it, it kind of allows you to view the content immediately uh, and just allow it to, to download while it's you know co kind of coming in. So it, it really, in the end, it's all about the perception of speed 
where you don't want to show someone this white screen or something that looks blocked, but like people need to be seeing activity. Absolutely, yeah. And the idea is for that above the fold content, just to make sure that appears instantly. And uh, you know, the user is usually okay with waiting for an image to finish downloading because it'll start right. to look a little bit blurry and you know, but uh, the, the problem comes in where they're trying to wait for the entire website to load at once. And that's really where the, the complex speed issues come in. Right. Um, so yeah, user experience for me is, is definitely one of the really important factors in speed that gets uh, missed a lot of times. And, and user experience is very tricky. I, I remember reading this article about an airport. It was in the US and I don't remember which airport it was, but apparently they got like many, many complaints. It was probably the number one complaint that uh, people we didn't like having to wait for the baggage. Um, and it was like, they, co they constantly complained about it. And then these guys brought in all these expensive consultants and they did everything they could to make the baggage come faster and they reduced it from something like eight minutes to seven minutes, which took them a lot of time and effort. And it's still, no matter how much they managed to reduce it, they still kept getting the same complaints. And then mm -hmm. they tried this other trick where they just made the walk from the air airplane to the baggage counter even longer. So then essentially the, num the, the, the time it needed to get the bags up was still the same, but people were spending yeah. less time actually waiting for the bags and suddenly they were miraculously happier. So it's almost like this, mm -hmm. this illusion of something happening is very powerful and something not to be sort of ignored. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I think it's funny because some tools uh, don't take user experience into mind. And I, I definitely think that's one of the things as a company we really try to stress is that you're optimizing the right metrics and you're optimizing the right way to make sure that uh, everybody along the way is happy. You're not just uh, satisfying the tool, but making your users kind of uh, less likely to use your site.